watching this film, it's likely that you've had recent experience of a spinal cord injury, either directly as a patient or indirectly as a family member, friend, loved one or colleague. Spinal cord injury often happens suddenly, so it's particularly traumatic for everyone involved. Fear, confusion and frustration are inevitable. You're desperate for information. We've made this film to help you to better understand what spinal cord injury is and also to understand some of the possible implications. This information should help you when you discuss specific issues with members of your medical team. Because the better you understand the condition, the easier it is for you to prepare and to start to cope. The spinal cord is basically a bundle of nerve fibers, like communication cables running from the brain to all parts of the body. It's a two-way message system carrying instructions from the brain to move muscles, for example, and back to the brain, returning sensations such as touch, heat and cold. The spinal cord runs inside the spinal column, protected by linked bones called vertebrae that are joined by softer cartilage discs for flexibility and cushioning. It's a very strong but not invincible structure. As the spinal cord passes down the spinal column, it branches out at different levels to reach all parts of the body. If the spinal cord is damaged by injury or disease, this link between the brain and the body can be completely or incompletely affected. A complete injury means no sensational control below the level of damage. An incomplete injury means partial sensational control. The level at which spinal cord damage occurs is important because it can determine the extent of the resulting paralysis. Injuries are referred to using two general terms. A low level or back injury is often referred to as paraplegia. With paraplegia, a patient typically loses control over their lower body, but they retain varying degrees of control over their upper body and arms. Higher level, or neck injuries, may be referred to as tetraplegia. With tetraplegia, patients lose control over more of their body, and in extreme cases, this may affect functions such as breathing, which will require additional treatment. But through all this, it's important to remember that every patient is unique, and the long-term outcomes for each patient are different. When someone suffers a traumatic injury, we often expect a frenzy of medical attention to fix the problem. With spinal cord injury, things can be different. Urgent intervention can be invaluable, such as surgical fixation to stabilize the bones of the spinal column and prevent further damage to the spinal cord inside. But surgery is not always appropriate. For many patients, the key treatment is a period of extended immobilization in bed. This is known as conservative care. Conservative care involves around-the-clock care over time to allow the patient's body to stabilize. Because it can be many weeks before a patient can even sit up, treatment can at times seem frustratingly slow. But conservative care is an essential part of spinal injury treatment. It involves crucial tasks such as bladder and bowel management and regular turning to avoid bed sores, also called pressure sores. Immediately after a spinal cord injury, the human body reacts by automatically shutting down parts of the nervous system. This is called spinal shock. Spinal shock is a temporary reaction whereby the body protects itself from further damage. Spinal shock may last for many weeks, and whilst it can mask the extent of any permanent damage, it can also mask any opportunities for restored function. So this period tends to demand a wait-and-see approach. Medical professionals understand that this is a particularly worrying and uncertain time. People such as doctors, nurses, 
physiotherapists and occupational therapists, these issues are part of their everyday work. But for you, it may be all new. Because of this, we've invited past patients to share their stories. About three years ago, when I was 16, I had a car crash. Um, I was out with a party and, and I was on my way home and just didn't make it home, really. We had a designated driver to take us home responsibly and it just went wrong. It's really hard having your accident so young at 16 because you've just come out of school and you haven't experienced life yet. My best friend was also in the accident with me. That Although she broke her neck as well, she came out of it okay. But we find it hard to talk to each other and be in company together. So we had to disconnect and live our own life separately. We couldn't build new memories because it was just constantly, oh, do you remember when we did that? It, was just like, it just did our heads in. And every time we met each other in a way, we just, I just cried because it was just so hard. The very first part is quite a blur. Just stare at the ceiling and just listen to the noises around you until the next person comes in. It's just like a continuous circle. I don't think anybody ever told me why I was there. I think you just pick up on it as you go along. I just don't think people wanted to tell me that's why I was never told. It included my mum. I think the only thing that got me through those first few weeks and months was talking to other people in the rooms with me because we're all in the same situation. The funny thing is you, you feel like you know them so well but you haven't got a clue what they look like. I think my real low time was coming out of hospital because you get your discharge date, you're over the moon, really excited. You think, I'm going to move on with my life now, this is it. And then they come home and it's like, wow, I'm in a wheelchair. And then you come out of that and then it, it really does get better and you become a stronger person because of it. Even before my accident, I really enjoyed doing textiles and like interior design. So I was determined to carry that on. Obviously, one of the things involved in textiles is using the sewing machine. So I was a bit worried whether I could use it. And my textiles teacher was also a bit worried. So I had to work really hard to prove to her that I could do it. I'm one of the lucky ones to have a big enough house for me to get around in and I've decorated it in my own way and put my own personal stamp on it. And people comment on, comment on that and say, it doesn't look like a disabled person's house, which is what I really wanted. I'd love to learn more and extend on my textiles and perhaps one day have my own business, interior design business. My accident was, uh, I was on my way to work on my bike, um, there was some road works going on, and um, this dumper truck just pulled out in front of me, I and mean, the guy just wasn't looking. I didn't know that you could live through a broken neck, and this doctor just stopped me, took me into a room and said, you know what, he's very seriously injured, um, he's got a broken neck, um, and you have got to smile. And I went up to the bed, I went, hiya, oh, yeah. and he just looked at me and said, well, you took your bloody time, didn't you? And I just thought, OK, I can do this, cos he's the same. I don't know how I thought he would change, but I thought he would change with a broken neck, but it was the same guy. I guess the biggest worry is, obviously, um, how the relationship might change for the future or what's going to happen in the future. But the best thing to do is, is not to put too much pressure on the relationship and, and, and just let it flow and see what happens, I think. It made no difference to me whether Phil was able-bodied or paralysed. It truly didn't, and... People say, oh, it must have, you must feel differently. And you just don't. I didn't. And I still don't. If you're in a new relationship or you're brand new injured and you're both sitting there looking at each other thinking, oh, my God, I think the, the most important thing to do is relax and try not to 
overthink the situation. Don't try to put pressure on each other to make decisions. There are no decisions to be made. The only decision to be made is how you're going to get through the next week. There were some very dark times, obviously, not being able to move in bed. Um, but um, I think you just have to get on with it. I was frightened and scared and hungry. And he, you know, ordered the nurse to get me some food and and started to look after me, even though he's laying there completely helpless in head traction, he took control of the situation. And that, for me, was brilliant. Kay and I decided fairly early on that we still wanted to be able to travel. And um, obviously, 20 years ago, things weren't very accessible. We didn't know how it would be by going abroad. We've had amazing experiences all over the world. And we save our pennies and we go, and accessibility across the world has improved in leaps and bounds. Phil and I believe nothing is more important than making your home environment as accessible as possible. We've just done our bathroom that's taken years to plan and done it exactly as we wanted it and it's an absolute beauty and it doesn't look like a hospital. I would say to somebody that's newly injured that don't panic and don't worry initially. Try and relax and go with the flow for the, for the for the time being, until you feel able to start having a crack at things, and then not to let obstacles get in your way if you can help it. And don't be afraid to ask for help if you need it, and just try and be positive, because life can be very good.